Hey, what's the crack? You're very welcome to film resolve right away. I respect your time. So make sure you check out the timestamps and see if there's any sections that you don't need so you can skip them and save yourself a bit of time. But if you're new here, my name is Lee Dalton. I am a professional videographer and an aspiring cinematographer. And this is a channel where you can learn a wide range of filmmaking techniques and how to pull them all together in DaVinci Resolve. In today's episode, I'm going to introduce you to some of the key differences between render cache color output and node cache. Now, if you find this content helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well as hitting the notification bell and do give the video a thumbs up as it really helps the channel grow. But with that out of the way, let's jump into it. To begin with, if you're a total beginner, let's talk about what cache media is in the first place. In short, this is media that has been rendered with effects and other things applied to it to ensure real-time playback. So basically, Resolve, instead of looking at the original clip with intense effects applied on it and trying to play that back on the fly, it's already done a mini render of that clip and stored it in a predetermined folder on your system that would have been chosen when you first set up Resolve. And it's now referencing that rendered clip to play back in your timeline for buttery smooth real-time playback. In Resolve, we have several options and ways of triggering the render of cache media depending on what we need. So whether we can't get real-time playback because of something on Fusion, because we have composited something or because of transitions, these are examples of ways we can trigger render cached. But today we're obviously looking at the color page and at the node level on the color page. So what is render cache color output? Selecting this option to render cached media will basically look at everything on the entire color page and take that into account when deciding what to render out and how to render it out. Node cache, on the other hand, looks at what node or nodes you've selected within your node graph on the color page and renders that cache media at that point. You can kind of consider it to be a bit of a place marker where the rendering of cache media takes place. So why is this important for you to understand? And in short, the answer is time. If you're not utilizing this workflow correctly and not understanding it, you could be wasting a lot of time waiting for media to generate for real-time playback that you don't actually need to be waiting around for. Now this ultimately boils down to the image processing pipeline of DaVinci Resolve. Now in the user manual, there is a full flowchart breakdown of this pipeline. Now I'm not suggesting that you need to understand every single step of it. Rather, I'm suggesting that you study it and learn the parts that are relevant to you and your workflow. Because doing this, I can guarantee you will increase your workflow productivity. This is probably starting to sound a bit obscure to you. So I'm gonna stop this talking head now, and we're gonna jump into the software and look at a really practical example that I very frequently happened upon. I wanted to start by establishing that my system is capable of playing this clip back when there is currently no additional work applied. So when working with log footage, the first thing I will always do, even if it's native ISO and well lit is add denoising, a small amount of denoising. But the thing is, temporal noise reduction especially is quite taxing on any system. And as you can see here right away, we're gumming up the system and we're getting dropped frames. So this is where you're going to want to start introducing some sort of cached media. Simply open the clips window and then right click the clip in question and then select render cache color output. That will trigger the rendering of cached media. And you can see we have a red bar and a blue bar starting to form and that indicates how the progress of the rendering of that cache media is going. And now even with denoising applied, we're able to get that real time playback. If you weren't getting that red bar and blue bar render cache indicator, you need to come up to playback and come down to render cache and make sure that that is set to user. 
So now let's say we want to push forward and continue grading our clip. So I add a new node and I'm going to do a simple rec 709 conversion. In this case, I'm using Cinematch. The thing to pay attention to here is our cache media indicator there. As you can see, it's turned red again and it's starting the render of that cache media over because we've now changed something on the color page. And this technique takes into account the entire color page. So adding new nodes or altering an existing node will cause the media to be re-rendered. So I'm exaggerating this here to really point out the downside of this technique. By adding another node to simply increase contrast, this gets triggered again. And by adding another node to increase saturation, again, the rendering of the cache media gets triggered. And we're constantly waiting around for media to regenerate for us to get our real-time playback. But here's the thing. The only thing in this particular grade causing us to drop frames is the denoising node. So if I open up our clip again and turn off the render cache color output and I disable our denoising node, you can see that we are back to getting real time playback. And this is a great example of where rendering just a node cache comes in super handy. Let's start this process over and get rid of those additional nodes. Now we're back to just our denoising node and we're back to non real time playback. So to render a node cache, you simply right click the node in question, come down to node cache and switch that to on. And just like before, make sure that in playback under render cache that you are set to user and that will trigger the rendering of that cached media. With that updated cache rendered, we can see we're back to real time playback. And now we can go about what we did before. We'll add a new node, add Cinematch, input the correct data and do a simple Rec 709 conversion. And you can see we still have a blue status indicator. No re-rendering has been triggered. We'll add another node and do that extra contrast. And we'll add another node and do the extra saturation all still maintaining real-time playback. This technique, of course, does have its limitations. Say, for example, you then go on to use a really intense effect like the watercolor tool. You can see we're back to no real-time playback. So this is a case where you're going to want to update the node cache by right-clicking on this latest node causing you trouble and turning node cache on on that node and allowing that to re-render. And once you've done that, you're back into the same situation. Anything done after that node that isn't particularly intensive will maintain real-time playback. There is one last point I want to cover, and this is where I'm going to tie in the importance of understanding to a degree the image processing pipeline that DaVinci Resolve adheres to. So we're back to a situation here where the node cache is the first node in our node graph of the denoising. So obviously, if I were to add a node before this using Shift S, that would trigger a re-render because something has taken place before our cached node and anything after will be fine. But there is one thing, despite not being able to see it right now, that actually takes place in the processing pipeline before we get to our nodes. And that is the camera raw tab. So if you're working with raw codec material and you update any settings in the camera raw tab, this feeds into that debayed footage feeds into your node graph and is therefore taking place before the nodes. So even if your node cache is the very first node in your node graph, this still takes place before it and will trigger a re-rendering of that cached media. And again, once that media has been generated, you're back to being able to add nodes afterwards and manipulate nodes afterwards without re-triggering the rendering of cached media. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered? Let me know in the comments below so I know to cover in a future episode or I can get back to you with a comment. My name is Lee Dalton and this is Film Resolved. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.